see the agenda, which if you've been watching it like a hawk, you probably noticed I've been adding stuff to it even during the introduction. So <laughs> this is a, a, a Google document that, you know, feel free to follow along on your own um, if you want to see where we're heading with things. There is a section for questions. So during the session, you know, of course, we can put some parking lot things in there if we want to, if there's something that we aren't able to get to right away. And of course, there's a little um, area for more information. So Dimensions is a really exciting product and there's a lot more information about it. But um, this is where we're starting today. And I don't know, Megan, do you want to say anything before I start or should I just launch into the Dimensions? Um, just I'm Megan Carlton. I'm the STEM librarian at UNCG and awesome. Launch into it, Leah. Okay. All right. So um, Dimensions AI is a really exciting search engine um, that allows you to discover lots of different information sources. I am going to get into it just by typing Dimensions AI into Google. So this is actually the the website for it, it's linked in the agenda. There is a free version that I'll click into in just a minute. That's what we have access to. But if you come to their main website, surprise, they want you to, they want you to go into the free web app. Um, just as part of my intro, before I go into the free version, I'm going to point out that Dimensions AI essentially allows you to search for free rec all kinds of records. I mean, it's got publications, grants, data sets, um, policy documents, so on and so forth. The free version, which is what I have access to, and I assume everyone else has access to as well, um, allows you to actually see the descriptions of publications that are found and data sets. And many of these are freely available, open access online. Um, and I am going to demonstrate it right now. So if I click on access free web app, it's going to take me over to the dimensions screen where we can see it's got a lot of stuff up here at the top is, um, you know, obviously your search box. And then on the right side, you have filters, which you can use before or after you search. And it already presents you with a lot of results, which is interesting in the center. And then on the left hand side is analytical view which lets you um, browse results that you're finding. It gives you like a graphical overview of results that you find. So as I mentioned, let me see if I can, my search is in fact gonna be kind of STEMI, African-Americans um, healthcare access. That is the search that um, I'm gonna be demonstrating and I have choices of what and how I want to search. I like searching just within titles and abstracts. It gets few results. I feel like they're more relevant if I were to choose full data. If the full text were available for that particular article, the full text would be searched. And of course, reference lists too. So um, instead of getting a lot of results, I get a whole, whole, whole lot of results like mega gazillion. And to me, it feels like they're not quite as relevant. So. I'm going to stick with the title and abstract search. And you can see in the center, it um, shows me how many sources were found. And it gives me a little preview that there were 178 grants found. There were 58 clinical trials found. I don't have access to this information. It's not going to let me click in here. But don't y'all worry. We have other sources for finding clinical trials, finding um, grants, that kind of thing. And we even have other sources for finding publications and data sets, which these are the two um, sort of areas that this free uh, search engine lets us get into. Now, by default, I am in the publications tab. I can come down here if I want to start limiting and I could say, okay, I only want the current year. I could imme immediately click that or I could click a range of years, which I love. Not every database lets you just make a list of options, it lets you select multiples at once. And you'll notice up here at the top where, uh, where my search is kept, it also has the filter with a nice easy X. Uh, so I can remove that filter at some point if I want. And there are also a lot of other really nice filters. So researcher, whoop, if I open up this, it becomes even more obvious that um, 
these filters are kind of context sensitive. They reflect the result set that I have. So it gives the names of researchers that came up the most in this screen um, or and on following screens of this item type. And I could limit to a particular researcher type. Now, this is something that you'll see in Scopus. You won't see it in PubMed, which is one of my favorite databases in the world. Um, I'm not going to use it right now, but I just wanted to point out that it was there. Other interesting research categories, something that I think is really exciting um, and is not in every database, is fields of research. It's found under research categories. So this will group results uh, by research discipline. And if the discipline that you want isn't in this list, there's a possibility that it's there somewhere, but it's just not showing up. So you can um, click on more and it just asks you to type something. So for instance, what's in here for nursing? I'm gonna click to limit to just nursing and you can see more and more and more, my filters are added up top and whoop, all of a sudden I only have one result, <laughs> which is fine. The system only knows about one result, um, but if it's the right result, that's great. So I can see right underneath, um, there is a PDF that's freely available. Sometimes if there's a free full text available, it'll say something else like open access or full text. This is really the first place to look if, if I see this and I like it. I am gonna remove this limit because I wanna show you a few other things. And they include, um, this to me is something to wrap my head around a little bit. When I see source title and journalist, I think what's the difference between these? So source title is, is the actual title of the journal or the book, um, which happens every now and then uh, among the results that I've found. And I can filter using that. And that again is in a lot of databases. Um, journal list is an overview of um, repositories and lists of journals where all of the data was pulled from that I'm looking at. So I can see that they're actually, um, if I look here, I do adore PubMed, I can see that Dimensions had pulled 400, and, well, it pulled a ton of records from PubMed and then it matched my search terms to 459 records that were from that source. Also, if you're familiar with something called the Directory of Open Access Journals, uh, open access freely available articles online, Dimensions pulls a lot of articles from that repository too, or that, that source, and it matched 107 results from that source. And I could use this to limit, um, for this presentation, I just thought I'd point out to you, wow, a lot of open access. So Dimensions is searching a lot of different stuff. And if you're curious about where it's searching, Journalist is a good place to look. And of course, open access. So this is another filter. Um, and this reflects really whether or not you're gonna be able to immediately get into the article. Um, all OA, um, you could limit to this and you would only see the articles that will let you click right into them. And then there are variations of that in case you're interested. There's also closed, which is sort of the commercial traditional publications that um, people out on the open web just can't get into. So I'm going to click this really fast and limit to close just so you can see what this looks like. So all of a sudden I get results like this. So title is still up here. I still get the authors. I get a year um, and the journal title or every now and then it'll be the book title. And then there's no PDF link. So for folks who are at UNCG, which I think is just about everybody on this call, remember the, um, the shortcut for finding out does UNCG libraries have this publication for you, just put the article title or the book title into WorldCat Discovery on our library homepage. Just search. Um, it knows about a lot of the articles we have. It knows about all the books and eBooks we have. So, and when you get a match, um, hopefully you will see held by UNCG and full text. Every now and then you'll, you will see uh, held by libraries worldwide, indicating we don't own it. And then there'll be an interlibrary loan link inside the record. In this case, I see a result that says UNCG has it and I see view full text. So I can just click and it should take me to the article.
I didn't wait for that. I decided to come back <laughs> to the dimension screen. So I'm gonna close that and we'll open it way back up to lots of publications. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate one more thing really fast, which is that you can change the sort. So d the default sort is um, to sort by relevance, but you can switch the sort to publication date or to some version of citations or online attention. So I'm gonna switch it to citations, meaning other resources in this database have cited back to something. And we can see underneath um, this top result now, this result was somewhere in my list, cancer statistics. It was buried a little bit though, but now it's at the top of the list. And it makes a lot of sense. This is one of the things that's freely available. Things that are freely available are easier to get to, they're cited more. And we get, you know, 441 citations from other items in that this uh, free search engine or free database knows about. So I'm gonna pause there because that was a lot. Does anybody have any questions about the searching, the filters, the sorting? Is there questions. an open? Sorry, is there an open access uh, option instead of a closed? Really good question. Yes. So when you're looking at results, so the 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 bonus of using this source is that it's it searches a bunch of records for free online. So you don't have to pay to get into this thing. You don't have to be a member of a university or a public library. When you get to your results, you can um, click on open access, which is at the bottom of the filters um, on that left-hand side. And you can just click all OA. And that's going to include all of the freely available publications, whether they're gold, green, bronze, hybrid, it will omit those commercial paywalled sorts of things. And you'll notice that most of the results in this database are open access. So that's just a, an easy way for, um, for you to kind of limit to things that are gonna be more accessible for you now and you know as you move on. Good question. Thank are you. Yeah. I said, thank you, sorry. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, well, thank you, Leah. I'm gonna get on to our next little section. Um, Actually, Leah, huh? I just noticed on the right-hand side, it looks like there are some metrics. I, I'm gonna go into that a little bit. Was oh, that you? Oh, okay. Oh. Yes, yes. So I'll I'll jump I'll into that. I'll pay you later. <laughs> okay, so can I, ask a, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Um, I know, Megan, you talked about some of the search parameters. Does Dimension AI have some peculiar, like, if and colon quotation type things that are different? Yeah, so I have not found as far as like their search rules um, to where they have any weird ones that you shouldn't really use, but it does require you to use some of those Boolean operators a little bit more than in some other databases. <clears throat> Is. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit into that, but it's not weird like with Scopus, how you use the brackets. This one's just going to be quotes. Okay. So yes, great question. <laughs> okay, so with that, so the very first thing, actually I'm going to turn my video off to make sure I don't cut out. Um, you know, to, to really, the first thing that you want to do when you find a new source is, of course, know whether or not it's going to be good for you and for good for your research areas. Um, so Leah did already talk a little bit about this fields of research that they have, but I think this is a really good way to see if this source is going to be useful to you. So under this research categories, just from the very first page, when it has, okay, every single publication in dimensions that they have indexed in here, we can go and just browse in the fields of research. So this will give you all of their, um, their kind of their classification system that they use to classify each of these articles. It will give you kind of a list of 
all of those areas. Um, so you can use this and combine it with your searches, um, which I think can make it very effective. Um, but you can also use this to say, hey, okay, well, um, the topic that I really study the most is kind of in organic chemistry. Let's just see about how many articles they even have in here. As you know, if you've, if I've ever come to one of your classes, I talk a lot about indexing and how these databases will all have very different um, articles indexed within them. So this is a good way to see kind of what is in this database and if it's going to be useful. Um, so right here on the right, and this is where we'll get a little bit into these analytical views, um, you can kind of look again at that overview of what's in your search results. And you can see, you know, well, within organic chemistry, here's kind of the titles that they're pulling from. Um, and if you're in organic chemistry, you can see that these are, you know, some big names um, as far as where people publish uh, for that subject area. So you can see how many articles from tetrahedron letters are indexed in dimensions. Um, so you can also use this to kind of narrow your search from the start. Instead of doing it on the back end, you can do this on the front end and say, okay, so within organic chemistry, let's say we're gonna look for methane. And again, I like to do the title and abstract search um, because when it looks in the full data, it may also be looking within citations um, that can kind of mess up your search and give you some results that aren't completely um, relevant. So I'm just going to pick one just to show you what that article level view looks like. And of course, since they add things all the time, um, the search results will change almost daily <laughs> on like what's at the very top. So, you know, always save stuff. If you find a really great article, save that to your Zotero or something so you'll be able to get back to it. Um, so right off, one of the things that I think stands out um, with dimensions is this dimensions badge. Um, I'm going to click on it and just give you a, a quick kind of what this is. Um, this is a lot of different uh, citation metrics. But the thing I like about dimensions is that they really explain it well. You know, all of these um, metrics and different in different databases and metrics from different sources, they all have, they might have different definitions. And yes, you can click on this and say, okay, well, what is this definition? And it will give you kind of the mathematical way that they um, come up with that number. But really, I think that they give you this kind of summary on the side um, can help you kind of put that number into context. So this two point one one field citation ratio is telling you that compared to other publications in this field, it's received 2.1 times more citations than the average. Um, so it gives you the total number of citations and then the recent ones, and it tells you right there, is in the past two years. So I think this gives you a really just quick overview where you don't have to really get into the math and what does this number mean it will, it just spells it out for you, which is great. Um, another thing that, you know, I really like as far as, um, you know, I'm a big user of Scopus because of the, just the way that everything is um, sortable and things like that. Dimensions gives that to its users for free, um, which is really great if you don't have access um, through a university to another indexing uh, platform. So you can look at these references and you can click show all and it will give you those references in a, a kind of a list that you can manipulate that you can say, okay, well, out of these citations, if you wanna look at the researcher or things like that, you can then see all of those, or I'm sorry, the references, all of those references um, in a list where you can get um, to those articles easily. So if we go back, it will give you that same list for the um, works that have cited this article. 
again, these are the people who've cited it, you know, this is kind of moving forward in that scholarly conversation and showing you who's building off of this work. And again, you can look at that in a list um, that's clickable and easy to get to. So going back to just our, our main search, back to the home screen that looks like a search, which can make it a little confusing. Um, one of the things as you're searching, I kind of mentioned those Boolean operators. Um, you know, as you as you add things, let's do another search. Just I always like to look for migration and um, climate change. So if you're doing a phrase, this is one of those you really need to put it into quotes. Um, so it will take those together. Let's see. And so as we do that search right off, there starts to be kind of some articles about, oh, health crisis and things, but I like animals. I want to look at birds. You can click up here and just add another search term and keep doing this as many times as you want. Um, and I'm sorry, I completely went off of... <laughs> I'm just playing in this now. I don't even know why I try to stay on task. Okay, so back to this uh, kind of the the way the different ways that you can sort. You know, sorting by citations is great, um, but one of their other metrics that they really highlight and make it easy to search for is alt metrics. Um, so I'll show you the detail pages that they give. Um, right here under their dimensions um, badge that shows you the citations and things, there's the altmetric score. And this will give you kind of that online attention and activity around, um, around that article, if it will load. There we go. Okay, so on this on this details page, it will give you kind of all the conversations surrounding um, surrounding that article in one place. So Altmetrics collects relevant mentions from social media sites, newspapers, uh, policy documents, blogs, Wikipedia, and everything. And so you can click on all of these tabs and see where where that mention was. So like in this one, this article was mentioned in the CNN article, and you can go in and click on that and find it yourself. So Altmetrics is a whole nother ball game. If that's a thing that you like, it's there, all that information's on, on the article page for you. So another great thing about uh, dimensions that yeah, could be great, could it's still up for debate, I think, um, is the abstract search. And let me try to find an abstract real quick. That article did not have one. There we go. Okay, so the abstract search that they have is really good for concepts that aren't really defined well using key keywords. So if it's a newer concept, um, something that you know, hasn't been researched a lot yet, this abstract search could be a good place um, to find related articles to your research. This can also be a great place to find um, uh, possible places to publish. You can put your own abstract in here and see kind of where related articles are being published. Um, so I just copied one of the an abstract from a different page, just to have an example. I think all my kids are stealing my internet. Okay, so, I'm sorry. So from here, it will, I don't know. I don't know how it works. <laughs> I'm thinking that it tries to pull out some of these keywords. Um, I think this 20 year thing might have thrown it off because now it has over the past 20 years. Oh, those are the same two articles, but it'll try to pull out these other words within your abstract um, and try to match that up with art other articles to find relevant articles um, without using 
without you having to come up with the keywords. Wow, I completely lost my my train of thought on this one. Um, so the abstract search is there. If you if you find out that it is fantastic, let me know. I would really love to hear some other people's experiences with it. Um, so the last thing I want to show is just the author search. And we'll go back to our main search page. And the author search is a little bit different within dimensions. So if you put in a researcher, and this researcher did not write 1900 publications, it is also pulling those citations and things like that. To get to just the publications that this researcher um, wrote and authored, You'll have to go down here on the right side of the page um, under this analytical view and find the researcher there. So now it's going to show you, okay, she does have this 128 publications, gives you her citations um, and the research categories that she has been published in. There is also, so when you, when you go to her profile, it will give you a lot more information as far as her citations, um, but I do also like that it shows you the grants that they've received that Dimensions is able to find, but you can also go to their ORCID ID page um, to see more information. Um, and down here you can see who they have um, collaborated with, which I think is really useful also. And then you can go through all of their publications and see them all in one place as well. Um, and I think that is time. I keep seeing the chat flash, but I don't have it up here. Let's see. Yeah, so if anybody has any questions, we can go through um, in more detail and answer those or however, whatever questions y'all have. <laughs> was our quick and dirty dimensions. <laughs> so far, there are no questions in the chat that I've been monitoring. Um, but if anyone, again, wants to <clears throat> feel free. I was curious for, you had talked about for the abstract search, um, just because I'm thinking about submitting a paper soon and I still not 100% where to submit it. If I, so, I'm, I just don't know. I, I didn't under, hear if you did say it. Um, how do you actually see like what papers, similar papers are uh, being accepted in? Sorry, I just don't yeah. remember hearing No, I, I, uh, I did go through that kind of quickly. So I think I still have my um, sample abstract in here. When you click at the top, um, it's going to automatically do a keyword search, but you can click over to this abstract search and you can copy and paste your whole abstract, a part of it, um, anything like that. I'm going to take out this 20 year thing that made it weird. Um, and then I'll show you how you see kind of those articles. <coughs> Let's see. Specifically, like what journals? Yes. They're, they're being in. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So if you open up this analytical view after you it does its abstract search, you can go down here to this source titles. And so this is going to show you, well, right here. Oh, I don't like BioArchive is that first one, which that's more of a preprint server. But maybe this journal of virology is going to be one that has a lot of related articles to that abstract. Um, so yeah, this one is definitely all about viruses. That seems to be um, what's most related. So each of these, actually, I haven't even clicked in to these articles if it'll give you more information. Oh no, oh well. Oh, it just goes to other articles that are also published in there. But it will give you these other metric scores, article metric scores. Um, but yeah, does that answer your question? Yes, perfect. Thank you. So, so when would we use this versus Scopus? 
I, since we pay for Scopus, I would, I would start there. Um, but you know, Dan, there should never be, you should never just be looking in one place. So I might add this, even though there, there might be a lot of overlap, um, since you should <coughs> always be, you know, adding two or three different databases to your search to get that comprehensive, um, I might try this one and just see. And if you hate it, that's, no, you know. It looks really interesting. No, yeah. I, uh, because what made me think about this is, you know, in the early days of the databases, there, there are always <clears throat> bodies of literature that were missed. And I, and I think these databases are getting better at that. But uh, this is maybe a slightly divergent question, but where do we stand in terms of uh, the database repositories versus all the, uh, the articles that are published, let's say in STEM? Well, that's are we pretty much up to date or are there still major bodies that have yet to be archived? Oh, that, that's a good question. So the one thing about dimensions that I like <laughs> is that they do pull from a lot of preprint servers, which I enjoy those. I, heard, I hold a lot of value in this kind of gray literature and things like that aren't going to be in Scopus as much because they're not, you know, peer reviewed yet or things like that. So um but as far as everything being nothing I'm, yeah i'm thinking about especially older publications because sometimes i'll see uh papers submitted that are trying to reinvent the wheel maybe something that was published 40 50 60 years ago right and uh you know especially for students who are starting out and they, and they do literature searches online if they happen to miss a huge body of work that it just hasn't been archived yet they get nailed when it comes time to publish their their dissertation. Yeah. So and that's, any strategies for, for addressing that? I mean, really just looking at those, the citation counts. I mean, you know, if something has been cited in a specific field 8,000 times, you better have read it, whether it was five years ago. That's why I don't like the limits for just the last three years, yeah. but just for my areas. Um, but I don't know exactly. I don't know, Sam, if you've explored this ever, or Leah, on. So, yeah. so, 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 so th this one goes back to 1907, which is pretty good. But like Maxwell's equations in physics were in the 1800s. I just don't know how do we, are there databases that go further back? Um, there, there are some databases that go pretty far back. So I know for me, for my areas, a lot of times, researchers are asking where is the most recent stuff every now and then i'll get like a nursing phd student who says okay i'm taking a historical look at this so yeah. one i would say start with the databases you would typically search for your discipline for your subject areas so for instance the CINAHL that we have goes back to the 1930s um you know and that's something the nurses are going to know about pubmed doesn't go back nearly that far um but i just and, and from there, you just kind of work your oh way, my. pay attention to the limits and the the, con, the the coverage in the normal places where you would search. I mean, I, I can't really give a blanket answer so, for you yeah, know, yeah. single database back to the 1800s. Um, there are sources that go farther back. Um, I know so this is great. How do you get back? I mean, when I just did my thing, I only got back to early 1900s. How did you get all the way back to 1600s? So, so in, in, I might do this in any database, just... Yeah. Um, when you look at the publication year, you can always click more. on that more and kind of see uh, what are your options. So this one, it has stuff apparently from the 1600s. That's probably so pretty good. It, <laughs> it probably has the Royal Chemistry Society papers or something like that in there. Okay. Thank um, you. I didn't know it went back that far. Great yeah. question, Dan. Always from you. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I would add one one quick thing to the earlier question, why would you search this database versus Scopus? The other part of the free database is just the, the data sets that it discovers. So, you know, that's kind of nice. I know some yeah, yeah. students approach me and say, hey, look, I need to find statistics or a data set on this topic or that topic. And then I'll go to, I'll scratch my head a little bit. I'll go to the library guide for frequently used data sources. And I'll think, okay, we belong to ICPSR. I know about Odom, I know about this repository and that repository, but I mean, it's kind of nice. You search this place and, and it does give you results from a lot of um, a lot of different sources for data sets too. So I think that's an advantage. 
That's great. I like it. It's great. Thank you. Can I ask one more question? <laughs> Just about the data sets. Um, is there a way to limit what uh, like file types you can receive from them. Like if you want just like CSV or anything like that or SQL, things like that. Um, oh, sorry, Leah. I have, I've played a little. Okay, so um, and that's one thing I forgot to show um, how their data sets are. Let's see, oh, I'm not sharing my screen. That would help. I don't think there is a way to limit by the file type. So what I have liked about this one is that it it will give you those links to where where or what repository that data is in. And so it makes it very easy to click through um, when you, oh, you know what? I should have found a quick example. Um, we're just we're just gonna keep our fingers crossed that this has one. Supplemental data. No, there, there will be, just like it has the references, there will be a link, if it has a link data set, um, where you can click through and get to, um, and get to it, but it doesn't let you limit by file type. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you. Please keep us posted. As you know, Megan, the, the class about half the class is on today and I, this is perfect alignment with what we're, we're studying so please keep us all informed as to uh future webinars yeah yes now, yeah so i did put in the chat our next one is in april it's on legal research so you know it could it could apply to all of us here oh um, yeah i need help with that i would imagine <laughs> It's a getting started. Um, Rachel Olson, our social sciences librarian, um, does not have a JD, but um, <clears throat> taken some cert certifications in this. So it was kind of getting started point. Um, and I did mention in the um, chat where the recording will live. You will all also get an email for the recording um, as well. Um, so, um, and yeah, Carla is mentioning that they are already dipping into this database. So great, that is great. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, and again, I feel like Megan and Leah said this throughout, but just to re-emphasize um, it is that um, remember to contact your liaison librarian for any questions. Again, I think most of you are here um, for Megan and Leah, um, but in case you are out of their liaison areas, let me know. I can um, direct you. Again, I think probably it seems like I've recognized some names, um, but let us know. Um, and yeah. Yeah, this is great. Before we uh, end this recording. And again, thank you so much, Megan and Leah. This has been great. Um, mm -hmm. There is an assessment form in the chat where you can let us know how uh, Megan and Leah did. Um, you know, I'm, I think that y'all are going to get great reviews. So um, fill it out, get them great reviews. And um, anything else before I end this? I see. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you again, Megan and Leah, um, for this again. I think they mentioned this at the beginning before people entered this kind of Friday on a Thursday day. I hope everyone has a great long weekend um, and enjoys themselves. Yeah. So take care. Thanks, thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye.